Al Pearson. All right, recently, Michel Ryan Zeke is out there. He just tweeted out a photo and it made me reflect on my past year as a K-12 math consultant. For years, I thought I could only teach secondary math. I spent a lot of time in senior classrooms, so I got to play with ideas like compound interest, combinatorics, probability distributions. I thought that elementary math was just too simplistic to be really interesting to teach with passion each day of a 30-year career. Well, boy, was I wrong. Recently, I've spent a lot of time hanging out with kindergarten teachers, primary, junior teachers, and been learning about all kinds of crazy stuff in elementary. One of them is counting. And when I think about counting, I used to think it was just reciting a list of numbers. But now, as my kindergarten daughter, uh, who, who can recite the alphabet, she can also count to 70, I now realize that she can't actually count. She doesn't understand counting yet, because the counting and compl the complexity in counting and quantity is, uh, is quite huge. You see, with letters, there's actually, uh, there's no re known reason why they're ordered the way they are, yet with numbers, there's magnitude that actually orders them. And this is really heavy thinking for students to develop over time. So while the letters A and Z actually have no magnitude, the numbers one and 26 have a very different magnitude. And over time, students must build this understanding to know that actually 26 is 25 units bigger, or 26 times as great as, or that there's all kinds of other relationships that are existing within this idea. Now, don't even get me started on unitizing. With unitizing, students have to start counting groups of objects. And now this is really important when we think about place value, and when we start making the leaps towards multiplication and division. And when we start talking about multiplication and division, you'll probably think about math facts. And when you think of the groups in the media that are constantly distracting our elementary teachers about math facts and back to basics, they can be negatively influenced to start doing things that people tell them they should be doing instead of what they know is right. Thank you. Um, if I believe that math proficiency is memorizing math facts, rules, and procedures, then I might also believe, and without doing that, without conceptual understanding to underpin these ideas, then I might also believe that counting is as simple as just reciting your alphabet, right? Now, don't get me wrong, I think anyone interested in math education wants students to have automaticity of math facts, but I think the real debate is how do we get students to that automaticity, all right? So when we're doing this and we're building this automaticity, we need to be thinking about how and, what and why we're doing what we're doing. Now, our elementary teachers are great at doing this stuff. They know that students thrive on context, and they thirst to hold real objects in their hands. And over time, students will start using square tiles and other manipulatives to represent donuts, or carrots, or goldfish. And in time, students will become so comfortable with those representations that they might start drawing and start pushing those manipulatives away because they're too cumbersome or time-consuming. And then, and only then, is when the teacher should start really pushing that symbolic and that structure of the mathematics, starting leading them towards procedural fluency and towards that automaticity. Now, what I'm talking about is something called concreteness fading. And as a secondary teacher, this is a brand new idea that could have really helped me when I had students that were struggling in my courses. Now, even Prince understands the concreteness the, uh, fading model. You think about Prince, he knew that you had to come to his show and experience him in the flesh to get that memory and that experience. And over time, you're gonna start buying posters, and you're gonna start buying other memorabilia that help bring back those memories of those experiences. And then, and only then, can you pull something like showing, come on now, <laughs> that symbol to actually mean something to you. Now, if you're a Prince fan, anyone out there, Prince, Prince? Yeah, right, couple? You're thinking, you got some chills, right? You're like, I'm thinking of those concerts, I'm really excited here. If you don't like Prince or don't even know what that symbol means, then you're probably just wasting your time, just like I did to all my students when I taught them symbols without any meaning. So my call to action for secondary teachers is to be more Prince. Let's steal these ideas from our elementary colleagues in order to give students in secondary a way into problems, give them some relatable context so that they can build a conceptual understanding through concrete and visual representations, and then we can help, help, help them unpack the structure and all of that richness that we bring in through the mathematical thinking and symbols.
Now, while I've enjoyed teaching in secondary, my math heart has forever grown to love and respect the great work that elementary math teachers do to pull out that complexity and that beauty that exists in our K-8 math curriculum. Thank you very much.